All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Charlie Graven, and uh, I'm going to tie for you a new little variation on the theme. Um, the poison tongue, this pr particularly the deep blue poison tongue, um, has become a hugely popular fly over the last, you know, that fly is probably 10 or 15 years old, um, with Umqua anyway. Um, and uh, um, last winter, gosh, it might have been before that, it might have been the winter of 2020, um, my uh, oldest son, Charlie, um, who, if you've been in the shop, you know is Junior or Little Charlie. Um, Little Charlie is the uh, the much bigger version of the two Charlies in the store. Um, but he uh, he said, you know, you should tie that on a jig hook. You should tie a, a jigged poison tongue. Um, and I never really got around to it. And then he sat down and tied a bunch of them up. And, um, yeah, sure enough, that uh, that's a good thing. Um, you know, the idea of the jig hook is that the... the uh, hook point rides up, and uh, uh, but one of the liabilities was is trying to get you know for a midge-sized fly um, a jig hook that was that was appropriate for this size bug, um, and what what we have come to is um, this new X series uh, XC two hundred and ten BL um, per to jig hook from Umqua. Um, and this is a size 20. This comes in a size 20. Um, and 16, 18, 20 is kind of appropriate sizes on these. Um, and what the cool thing about this hook, let me slide that back out of the way. You can see it's a flat eye hook. Um, and it's, gosh, I don't know if that's 60 degrees. Um, doesn't say. Um, yeah, somewhere around 60 degrees anyway. 59, 58, something like that. Um, with that flat eye and coupled with this tungsten jig bomb, which is uh, sort of this oval-shaped bead that's got, if I hang him just right there, uh, an offset hole. Um, these little beads are much heavier because they're not counter-drilled. So they've just got a little, uh, let me see if I can get a hold of one here to hold up for you. Do this very carefully. Uh, There you go. I hold that just right. Yeah. See, we knew that was going to happen. Um, at any rate, um, that hole is offset. Uh, and the idea um, that that happens here is this bead is going to be mounted on the flat, uh, on the upright piece, and set up here off the front. And it's a little, little hanky here in the meantime until I get the thread started. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to take some either dot gray or uh, Vivas 14 dot in gray. Um, and Vivas has two grays. This is the darker of the two. Um, I'm going to start this thread just up behind this bead. And you can see I can kind of rotate that bead around. And I'll just build a little wedge of thread up against its back edge. And that'll lock the bead in position so that it's now the, the high point on the hook. Um, and offsetting that weight like that assures that this fly rides hook point up. Um, so pretty crafty way to go about it. And the cool thing is, is I've got a 332nd bead on this size 20. Uh, so this fly truly is a little bomb. Just gets right down where you want it to. Um, and I can cut that tag end off. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take, <clears throat> excuse me, a piece of blue wire. And I've still got a bunch of blue Lagerton wire. Um, most people don't have that, but you can use any blue wire that you do have. You just want a fine size. Um, and I'm going to take this piece of wire, and I'm going to tie it in just up here behind the bead, and pull it out, and then I'll tie it in again. There we go. And I'm going to wrap back over it, and I'm going to try to keep it along my near side of the hook. It's just easier for me to see there. And I'll come just slightly around the bend, and then I'll come forward again. And I want to keep a fairly thin body. Um, I can smooth this off a bit. 14 knot thread lays really flat and nice. Uh, so I can make a nice smooth thread body here um, with a little bit of taper. Not much, but just a little bit of taper. But just a thread body fly. This is not a hard fly to tie by any stretch. Um, so now I'm going to take that blue wire and I'm going to go about five turns. So just sort of evenly spaced turns of wire right up to the bead. I'll tie that off with a couple of turns. And then you can just helicopter that and break it out of there. And then a little gray or lavender um, UV ice stubbing. This is UV gray. Um, 
And really what we're going for is the, the sort of blue UV fibers that are in there. Um, and just a tiny little pinch. Um, you know, keep in mind, that's a size 20 pretty jig hook and device. Um, and that's the end of my index finger. Um, and that's just a tiny little bit of dubbing. So I'm going to take and twist this down. Um, we're just going to build a ball with this, so I don't need to spread it out very much. But I just want to twist it down good and tight. And I'm going to build a little ball of dubbing behind the speed right up against the back edge so that when I run out of dubbing, my thread's just at the back edge of the bead. And then I'll whip finish right in there behind. Now you can come in if you're so inclined. Um, this is not a bad idea on bead heads in general. I'm just going to put a little head cement on the thread, make a couple turns there, and then unwind that, and that'll let that head cement bleed in without gooing up the dubbing. Put my pin back in my bottle, and that's our our finished deep blue poison tongue jig. Uh, obviously, all the other colors you can, you know, the poison tongue comes in a bunch of colors. Um, you can you can time in those colors as well. Um, but with that uh, uh, pretty jig hook, we've got a tiny little bug. This is a truly small hook, and it's barbless. Um, and with that big tungsten bead on there, that's going to turn right over and right hook point up. Um, but it's good and heavy, so disproportionately heavy, um, which is always a good thing. Um, and you can see the hook eye there. Get my thumb in there for your for your viewing pleasure. Um, is flat and exposed, so you can still thread that fly very easily. Um, and these tungsten jig bombs have sort of become the become the rage. They are a, a heavier bead for the same size. Um, there's just more metal in them, and uh, uh, they actually give you a little bit more working room on the hook. You can see I didn't have to shorten that fly up. If we had put a conventional bead on there, um, or a conventional slotted bead, um, that would take up a good portion of the hook, and we'd end up with a much much shorter fly behind that big oversized bead. Um, in this case, we've got just that little sort of kettleball handle around the, uh, the, the eye of the hook, and then we can kind of wedge the fly up against it. Um, so we've sort of bought a little extra space there. Um, pretty crafty idea. So there is the uh, poison tongue jig. Um, there it is. Tie some of those up. This is a great fly in the wintertime. Um, I like this during any low light situation. Blue is a weird color. Um, I don't know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know that fish see it as blue, um, but they definitely can see it from far away. I've seen fish move further to eat this fly than any, any other fly that I've ever used. Um, they definitely see it from a long way away. Um, so this is my, uh, my sort of go-to, uh, um, fly for a, uh, uh, a point fly in my rig. Um, and I'm very often I'll fish this with the jujube behind it. And, uh, um, usually I keep pretty busy. So there he is. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.